And to do that, to switch gears tonight, we are going to welcome in Jason Lloyd from The Athletic and Mary Kay Cabot from Cleveland.com joining us here. And I'd rather talk Guardians. <laughs> can we, can, we, just, can <laughs> we just keep talking Guardians? Can we continue to talk baseball with them? <laughs> All right, let's start out with Jason Lloyd. Jason, we were talking a little bit before we got started here. Um, once again, the trend continues of the Browns giving away another game. Just what did you make of everything we saw out there yesterday at the stadium? <laughs> I mean, where do you even begin? Obviously, defensively, they got a lot of issues that they got to fix. They got to clean up uh, the, the running game, or the run defense particularly. They got absolutely gashed. You saw the answer to that, the trade for Deion Jones. Immediately after the game, uh, Kevin Stefanski met with Andrew Barry and Paul DiBodesta in his office after the game. And when the guys emerged, clearly they had a decision to make, and they were going to go try and get some help to replace Anthony Walker. You know, it's the same old, same old at quarterback as well. I keep saying this. I've said this all day on various platforms. Jacoby Brissett, and got to have it moments, he doesn't have it. Three games they've lost, he's thrown three crucial interceptions all three times. And, you know, you kind of knew what you were signing up for yeah. when the Deshaun Watson suspension was extended to 11 games. You knew this was going to be your fate, and we're just sort of watching it play out. Yeah, Mary Kay, to the defensive side of the football, I remember listening to – you know, different shows or reading things heading into to the to, to training camp with the Browns. People felt like this was going to be one of their best defensive units, maybe since they got back from 1999. We're, we're seeing a lot of the same patterns with this defensive group. Who do we hold accountable here? Well, you know, I think there's a, a whole lot of blame to go around for the defensive woes. I think it's a little bit of everything, really. I think some of it falls on the players. Some of it falls on the scheme, the defensive coordinator, Kevin Stefanski. Uh, I think it was really unfortunate that Miles Garrett and Jadavian Clowney both returned to that game yesterday, and they <laughs> weren't able to come up with that big kill shot, that big play uh, to kind of put it away at the end. And that's what you need from your really big game game players like that and uh, they just need more of that and you know Jason frustrating yesterday it, it almost seemed like Brandon Staley and, and the Chargers gifted that to the Browns they go for it on that fourth and two the Browns defense to their credit steps up there they get the stop Browns put Cade York in position I think we got to hold off on the Hall of Fame ceremony for Cade York <laughs> right now after he misses two field goals yesterday yeah I mean listen Cade's going through it right now he's having a crisis of confidence that probably he's never had before in his life but kids probably never miss <laughs> two kicks in one I think that's game what he before. said. I think he said that. Yeah. So, but listen, we can't do. You can't do anything rash. You can't c cut him. That's been done in the past. I mentioned this earlier. The Vikings did this a few years ago. They traded up. They got uh, Daniel Carlson, a kicker out of Auburn, just like Cade York out of, out of LSU and SEC school. He missed three kicks in one game. The Vikings cut him, <laughs> and then he went on to the Raiders, and he's now one of the best kickers in the league. Kevin Stefanski and Mike Prefer were in Minnesota when that happened. They're not going to make that mistake again. You just have to live with it. It's rookie. It's rookie growing pains. It hurts, but I do believe he's going to be one of the best kickers in the league in time. You just have to kind of grin and bear it right now. Mary Kay, where do you think that the front office is at where, where, while they're seeing this all kind of develop, right? Jason mentioned, hey, Jacoby Brissett, your quarterback. They kind of knew what they were getting into. I mean, despite him being their quarterback and you don't have Watson until December 4th, are their expectations as a team still very high where they were expecting to have a great record this early in the season, even without Watson? I think that the front office really believed that the Browns would contend and stay in the hunt until Deshaun Watson got back on December 4th. Obviously, that's starting to slip away a little bit. They really have to get it together. As Jason mentioned, Jacoby Brissett can't be throwing interceptions at the end of football games when the game is on the line and they only need a field goal to either win or tie the game. Uh, so that's one thing that has to get better. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, there was actually a little bit maybe a glimmer of hope in the building today when Deshaun Watson returned. I think it is a reminder that he's coming back for those last six games, and I think he'll provide a little bit of an emotional boost for the guys in the building, and I think they can see that maybe there is some light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, it's a great point by Mary Kay, Jason. I was thinking about that. Okay, great. Deshaun Watson's back in the building. You know, the details of that suspension, he is allowed back in Berea. Today was the first time. Then I thought to myself, okay, well, we're still seven, eight weeks away here. <laughs> What's going to be left of the season True. when he comes back? Yeah. That's the question we just don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, I think the expectation is that he'll come in there and, I don't know, he hasn't played in a game in quite some time, though, either. That's the other thing. How much rest is going to be on there? Do expect him to just come in and sweep them up and save them? over the last six games, I think probably isn't very realistic. 
Mary Kay, a lot of people have been asking me, can we see more of Chubb and Hunt on the field at the same time? And I, I thought to myself, okay, they, they did run the ball a little bit more yesterday, but yeah, I would like to see them both on the field in some sort of package at the same time. Do you think we could see that from them or have the Browns kind of put their foot down on that? Well, you know, I, I don't really think that's a huge issue. They ran for 213 yards yesterday. So whether those guys are on the field together or separately, the run game is not the issue. I still think that there are some concerns in the passing game. I still think that they should try to add a veteran receiver before the tra trade deadline is over. Uh, someone who could just go out there and make that big clutch play for you, take a little pressure off of Amari Cooper, give Jacoby someone else, give Deshaun someone else for when he he comes back. Uh, I just think it's still necessary. Jason. I agree with that. Okay. I agree with that. But I also would say Donovan Peoples-Jones the last couple weeks seems to be really earning the trust of Jacoby. Hmm. Two pretty decent games back to back. I know he was out of bounds. It doesn't count. But the catch he had down the sideline late, late in the game, about two yards out of bounds. But it was a great catch. And he's really like last year was supposed to be his year. It didn't work out. I would have been, I, he's, there's more there than I yeah. thought there was going to be this year with DPJ. Mary Kay, I want to look ahead with you very quickly here. Um, the Browns, next up for them, it's the New England Patriots coming to town. We know they're banged up, but you know Bill Belichick as well as anybody, right? He's going to have these guys, he's going to have something strung up for them where they're going to run the ball about 900 times, won't he? <laughs> Yes, absolutely, 100%. You know he's already pouring over this film. He's looking for the holes in that defense. He's trying to exploit what these guys are not doing well, and that is getting gashed in the running game. We don't know if Mac Jones will be back or not, but Bailey Zappi, their rookie quarterback, went out and won a game. They shut out the Lions 29-0, and uh, you just know that Bill Belichick is going to be cooking something up for these Cleveland Browns. Yeah, we know that's what he's going to do. He's done that best for years. They beat the Lions, as Mary Kay said a couple weeks ago. Probably should have beaten the Packers in Green Bay. Mary Kay Cabot, Jason Lloyd, we appreciate your guys' time. We'll see you next week here with Jimmy.